You are preparing to take a placement test for a math class at the College of Eastern Idaho. Doing your very best is important, so the placement is accurate. One barrier can be the way answers are entered on the test. This video will demonstrate how to use these tools. There will also be an online tutorial before you take your test where you try using a few of the tools. As you watch this video, don't worry about the math. Just learn how to use the entry tools. Remember, after your first test, there are tutorials available to help you improve your score before you sign up for math class. Here's an example question. On the right will be your math entry tools. This question only has one tool. It has a clear all tool, a go back one step, and a how do I use the tools question mark. My answer goes inside this rectangle. To start entering my answer, I need to click in this little rectangle. It turns the rectangle blue and the cursor is flashing there. Let's say I wanted to enter an answer that's a fraction. I could use my keyboard and just hit 5, the divide symbol, and a 3. Or I could click on this fraction tool and it puts a fraction there ready for me to hit 5 divided by 3. Well, that's completely wrong. If I just use this back arrow, that will only erase my very last entry, so it will erase the 3. But the whole thing's wrong, so I'm going to hit the Clear All button right here to get back to the start so that now I can enter my correct answer and then I would hit the submit button at the bottom. This question has three tools, a clear all tool, and the undo last step tool and this question mark button. If you click the question mark button, it talks about each of these tools and how to use them. I don't need this plain old square root tool. I need this tool that has a root with a different index. The little box that's in front of the radical symbol here is if I had something typed in front of the root. And you'll see that on the next question. So when I click this tool, it gives me a place to put the index. Again, don't worry about the math. Just learn that each of the blue boxes is a place that I can type part of my answer. It's just a way for the computer to be able to configure your answer the way you would write it on paper if you were doing the math on paper. Now I need an exponent button, so I'm going to use this to put in my final part of the question, and then I hit Submit. Sometimes you will have a question that has more than one answer. In that instance you'll use this list tool so that you can type a list of answers. Um, here is a question that has the no solution tool that is not the same as I don't know. That is a mathematical answer, no solution. So notice that that is available when it's needed. We do need a list here because there's two answers for this question. We need a negative 2 and then I need the square root button and in the other answer after the comma, that comma is very important, it's part of the solution, you have to have it, and 2 square roots of 7 is the second solution on there and then you will hit submit. This question has four tools along with the clear all, undo, and question mark.
I'll talk about the point tool later on. The pencil, I can put a point wherever I want. I can use the eraser to erase the ones that are maybe mistakes. The best tool for this question is the line tool. And you'll notice as I move the cursor around on the graph, the line follows my cursor. Once I click the mouse on a point, that point is now static. It has to stay there. And when I move the cursor now, the one point I clicked on is stuck. I just have to now find another point on my line and click it. Once I have two points, this line is set. If you're happy with the line, you say submit. If you're not happy with the line, you clear it. Again, we're going to use the line tool and we're going to enter the boundary. For this question, you either need a solid line or a dashed line. And this will change it back and forth. You have to click on the tool and then click on the line and it will change it from either dashed to solid. That's very important for some questions. Then you have to decide which side to shade. This is your shade tool. Whichever side I click on will become shaded. And then we say submit. This question has a different kind of a graph tool and we'll look at that. I'm going to show you what this point tool does now. The point tool opens up a dialog where you enter a specific point that you want to show up on your graph. When you're using the pencil tool, it's hard to enter things like two-thirds to, to fine-tune your pencil and get it to be specifically on a fraction answer. So you can use this point tool to enter those exact answers. Now I have one point. Another way again to enter these points is with your pencil tool. After you have the five points that are required, you click this, I call it the connect the dots tool, and it fills in your graph and you can say submit. This problem illustrates a couple of other types of tools that are available to you. We'll use the point entry tool. I can use the pencil entry tool to enter the first point at 0, 1. But then the other points are going to have to have fractions in the answer. So I need to use this point entry tool to make it turn out precise on my graph. I'll enter the 1 and the 5 fourths. 5 fourths is a fraction. So I have to use this fraction button and plot the point. And you can see that it plots it at 5 fourths there. The little blue cross symbol is right above the 1 line. I'll just quickly enter these other points to show you how that's done. And I'm just using the plot point tool. The last point to plot is a negative 2. Again, the fraction tool, and I click in the denominator to get the cursor in the denominator so that I can then enter the 25. And here's my five points that were required. Now it says draw the asymptote, and it's one of these two lines. I need this one. If I move this, you can see that the cursor 
um, drags my asymptote to where I need it. Then I click my mouse button where I need that asymptote to be. To finish the graph, I need to click on the connect the dots button. And it graphs it for me, and then I say submit. This question has nine tools along with the clear all and the undo. Notice we've got fractions that we could use. There are sets of either parentheses, brackets, or a combination of bracket and parentheses that could be used on this question. And there's a negative infinity, a positive infinity, and a no solution. And those are all things that can happen for this question. This particular question is only going to have brackets. Now notice if I click the union tool inside, it puts it inside there. That is not going to be correct. So I'm going to undo that piece and I'm going to use the arrow key on my computer to get outside the bracket and I'm going to click on the union key and then I need a bracket and a parenthesis and I'm going to need an 8 there and I need an infinity and then I say done. I hope this helps you when you enter your answers on your test. If you have any questions Look at the contact information on the website. Come and see me so that we can help you learn how to enter the answers.